I'm head of R&D at Framestore. I, uh, I'm responsible for sort of managing the, the custom development team. So in any VFX house, you have a large number of people who have to develop sort of proprietary tools, uh, whether it's to do with rendering, compositing, rigging, you know, the, the full gamut of VFX. And like any VFX house, Framestore has a fairly large collection of proprietary stuff, and I'm, I basically, I'm in charge of the guys who develop that. I think we sort of started worrying about gravity or the rendering of gravity around about sort of the summer of 2010. Uh, whenever you start a big project, there's always a point you go through where you're working out, well, what do we need to do that's new for the show? Or how is it going to force us to change? On gravity, probably the biggest one was really the rendering. And the reason rendering was such a challenge, I think, was a mixture of the, the complexity of the, the geometry we knew we were going to have to render, the length of the shots, which meant we didn't really have anywhere to hide. Uh, also, the um, the number of people who were going to have to be working on this. We needed to figure out a way of rendering a large amount of very high quality footage in a relatively short period of time without a million lighters. Um, our existing lighting approach really had been sort of built around this idea of doing lots of pre-passes in order to optimise the, the final render. And that's fine, but it, it tends to fall over with very long takes when you sort of, the camera is changing a vast amount and you it becomes a more of a data management challenge, I think. And on very long shots, we were very worried that our lighters would spend most of their time essentially being data clerks, rather than concentrating on producing nice images. So around summer 2010, we started looking around to see, well, what could we do that would make our lives better? And we did a number of things. We investigated changing our existing rendering approach. Uh, we investigated a whole number of new renderers. And after a period of testing, we settled on using Arnold to to sort of help make our lives and gravity easier. Easier partly because there was less work for the lighters to do or, or less sort of things for them to have to tweak and less things for them to worry about. And also easier because from a sort of the point of view of the company, we had confidence in our ability to, to get the show through using it as opposed to hoping for the best. Um, I think changing a renderer on a, a big show and changing your render in a sizable company like Framestore is a bit worrying. It's sort of, it's your calling card. It's the thing that your clients see. So making the switch is something that focuses attention. And I think uh, the thing about Arnold was that it sort of, I think it, it gave us the most confidence that not only could we do it, but the developers behind the tool would, were keen to work with us and were able to sort of put up with the, uh, the trials and tribulations of using it on a big show. The, the one that everyone will pick up on, I guess, is speed. Is that Arnold is sort of well known for being able to deal with a very large amount of geometry in relatively short periods of time which is great for gravity, but I think the thing that you tend to forget and the thing that you tend not to sort of read about is that it's already been through the, the ringer, really, in large film VFX production. So it, all the things that, as a VFX house, we're used to relying upon, all the tricks of the trade, if you like, Arnold had already accommodated. The developers had sort of been through the fire of, of making sure those features would work. So it sort of, I think it gained us confidence, really, in how we could adopt it, and it meant that it was a bit less worrying. I mean, adopting a new renderer on a any large production is scary, and in a largest VFX house like Framestore, it's scarier still. So I think it's a mixture of the speed and the fact that enough, there was enough confidence, I think, in it, it having already sort of proven itself. It wasn't quite as terrifying as it could have been. Framestore is quite a proprietary setup in that we have an awful lot of custom technology, which our, our lighters and artists use to interact with. So basically, once we'd made the decision, sort of around late 2010, to adopt Arnold, we, the R&D department, the shaders department, and some of our senior look at people began working on making it as transparent as possible for our lighters to work with Arnold in the same way they would of our previous renderers. So our, probably our core lighting tool is something called FribGen, which is our, the front end and the UI that the lighters interact with day to day. We added the support for Arnold passes, so they look just like passes for everything else. We then needed to rewrite pretty much all of our render time procedurals, so everything from uh, volumetrics, geometry, cameras, uh, uh, particles, uh, crowds, hair, pretty much anything you might imagine. We then sort of, we switched over to have Arnold support for it. So from the perspective of the lighters, I think the idea was that they, they, they could quickly forget they were using Arnold. As far as they were concerned, they were pressing pretty much the same buttons as they'd always been pressing. Um, fortunately, there were fewer buttons, so it wasn't quite so hard for them to work with, but it, it was less of a shock. I think the other sort of half of it, though, is the shader side of stuff. And the, again, the lighters were used to interacting with the way that they develop looks, uh, the look development artists, with our shader library. 
And so in the same time as our R&D people were going off and changing all our code over to work with Arnold, we were having to port all of our, our shader technology to Arnold. And uh, again, we were sort of working on the principle, it must look the same as our existing lighting setup, so that it would be very easy for our lighters to transition onto gravity from a sort of a show which was using a more traditional sort of point-based lighting approach. I wouldn't say there's anything that I would pick out as being hugely difficult. We sort of expected it to be quite traumatic, really, to sort of change over all of our technology base to work with a completely new renderer. Actually, it went slightly more smoothly than you might expect. We, some of that, I guess, is because Arnold is actually quite a lot simpler to work with as an R&D guy. There's not quite so much of sort of baggage about things. It's also because uh, it, it's a very sort of pure, simple, unidirectional path tracer. So there's an, it's not like it's trying to accommodate lots of different rendering approaches. So from a development point of view, it's actually quite straightforward. From the shader point of view, it wasn't really the... Um, I guess you wouldn't really say that that was particularly difficult either. It, it's more the fact that you're, the transition to doing physically based shading and ray tracing everything means that you sort of, it's very easy to fall into the trap of making the render very slow. And so our shader guys were really sort of, they spent their time sort of figuring out how to sort of dissuade lighters from going crazy. Uh, I would say the, the biggest thing though, it wasn't, it wasn't a difficulty, it was kind of sort of a light bulb moment. When we realised the philosophy we'd used to develop a lot of our technology was worked on the principle that we were working in a way where we were trying to drip feed geometry and data to the renderer. Once you start using a renderer like Arnold, there's kind of less of a benefit to that. And so consequently, we put an awful lot of effort into just accelerating how the geometry got to the renderer, rather than figuring out how to put it in at the last possible moment and segment it too much. It's, uh, I guess that's probably the, the, the largest change of philosophy. Basically, you let the renderer handle the geometry and you don't try to be clever about it. We put an awful lot of effort into uh, developing the shading for cloth. There's, there's a lot of surprising amount of the, the, the things floating around in the Earth orbit covered in a particular type of cloth, which reacts in a very specific way to, to bright sunlight. And a lot of our audience have obviously seen this in uh, NASA photography. So it was important for us that, that it, it looked pretty much the same as the, the things the audience were expecting to see. And doing that efficiently in a way where you can move the camera next to it, or you're next to spacesuit, say, or, and also be able to sort of seamlessly transition the camera away, that was an important thing for us, and so we put a, a fair amount of development effort into how we could import and sample that efficiently, how we could cope with sort of all the complicated self-shadowing and self-scattering that's going on. So that was a big, a big development push. Um, I guess another one I'd point out would be the, uh, that we're sort of proud of, is the, the Earth. You know, I suspect most people look at it and assume it's a map painting. And there's an awful lot of painting in certain shots, but there's awful, a lot of long shots where the sun is striking the Earth at grazing angles. So it was important to us that it was, we saw it as the Earth actually does behave in that way. So we developed a number of custom shaders to do things like ray march the, the atmosphere, ray march the, the cloud data set that we were able to generate, ray march the mountain data set, so it all appeared to sort of interact properly. So, and that's really picking on two specific shader development areas. There's actually a whole lot more, but they're kind of the two big ones that you can point to on the screen. I'd say the biggest challenge really were the interior shots. The interior shots are sort of the, they're the hardest thing to do for a unidirectional path tracer. So we put an awful lot of effort on both the R&D and the shaders team into ensuring we could render the interiors somewhat efficiently. Uh, again, it's, we're, it, the, the, we're used to in VFX being able to hide and cheat things. When on long interrupted, when interrupted takes, you don't have many places to sort of fake the addition or the removal of lights. So we put an awful lot of effort into making working out, well, how do we sort of pre-calculate some lighting? How do we ensure that as the, the lights are occluded by, the, by Sandra Bullock, as she sort of floats in front of the light, how does the illumination render? How do we import and sample things correctly? I'd say that's probably the biggest one. Um, and then there's all the usual small things which add up, like the brushed metal. Efficiently doing brushed metal, you would think would be relatively straightforward in this day and age, but still presents challenges for important sampling. Um, Stereo, I guess, would be a, uh, another thing I'd point to. They, w we were rendering an awful lot of the, the, the footage in native stereo, and we needed to generate our own sort of, uh, essentially add to Arnold a way of, of, of generating that efficiently. So that's, uh, there was a development effort there from some of our lead, uh, lead uh, R&D TDs. Um, and essentially there's the usual sort of problems of essentially getting lighters to transition to a new renderer and understand how to use it efficiently. All the sort of things you would expect in any large show, really. 
No. But then again, no Big Show ever is particularly easy. Uh, just the length of the shots, the sort of the complexity of things was a challenge, really. I think the, um, basically the buzzword of the show really was optimization. The amount of work we put in in order to make sort of the shots efficiently renderable in the, the time and with the resources we had was enormous. I think they, uh, there was probably as much effort put into making it quick as there was making it look nice. Uh, so we did things like, you know, we'd change our shader networks, we'd optimise things, we'd rewrite shaders because they were getting used a lot in to sort of tweak out efficiencies. I think one of the other big challenges I'd pick up on is the, um, the fact we were delivering native stereo. We were, we were rendering CG and Arnold out of the box doesn't really understand stereo, which is perfectly fine. So we had to develop our own technology to allow us to generate both eyes in a relatively efficient way. And that was a, uh, that was a big win for us, to be able to do that and not have to render everything twice. The simplicity and the predictability of it, really. Simplicity on sort of from the perspective of our lighters, really, and to a lesser extent our compositors, and that because though that we were able to sort of package things in such a way that the lighters needed to care less about how the renderer worked, it meant they could focus on you know rendering the, the, the elements as though they were a set and thinking as a real stage lighter as opposed to managing all sorts of complicated, well, this is my, my bake pass that I've done, I can reuse this piece of data from here to there. I think that made their lives a little bit easier. Um, of course, it also sort of had a knock-on benefit that it, it meant they were producing elements that were that the compositors would then view as being pretty much like photographed elements, rather than sort of the, the slightly fudgy way we'd done it in the past, where we were sort of passing lots of data to the compositors and hoping everyone would somehow magically figure it all out. So that's the simplicity side of things. I think the predictability side is would be sort of more. We were able. We knew how long renders were going to be able to take. We could therefore plan around them. We could uh, we could schedule. We had producers basically whose job it was to really uh, track when various shots would get finished, which are where some of the shots are sort of ten plus minutes long. This is a big deal. I think that together, really, that they're probably the ones that the things I pick out as being the, the big wins for us with Arnold. I think there's all the other bits and pieces that you'd probably be more expect me to say, things like the sort of the speed of rendering and so on, but they, nice as they are, they're, they're things that we can sort of hack around other things. I think Arnold brought the simplicity and the predictability that we'd find difficult to get with other approaches. Uh, an awful lot. Uh, Gravity was a really big show for us. They, I think we worked on it for a little over three years. Uh, and during the course of that, I believe about 400 people worked directly on the project. But the, sort of the nature of how Framestore works is that pretty much everyone else in the company will have touched it in one form or another. Uh, Rendering-wise, I think we probably peaked at about 15,000 cores, uh, and that was working 24-7 for a long period of time, churning out the frames. Uh, they, uh, disk space-wise, I think we were of the order of 600 terabyte with the footprint of this show, which is large, but I think one of the benefits of Arnold is because we're not working in a pre-pass system, the, the footprint is a lot smaller than it would otherwise have been. I think one of the things was that you know changing a renderer on a big show is uh, you know, a largest house like Framestore. It's quite worrying, really, from a technology point of view. There comes a moment when you're committing to something that you think is going to work, but you're not 100% sure. And I think the kind of the moment where we sort of we calmed down quite a lot really on Gravity was when the other shows that were going through Framestore at the time started to look over our shoulder and going, "Oh, hey, can I can I use that on my show? Can I can I adopt this? Can I use this on this sequence or this shot or this creature?" And I think sort of once we sort of found that the other shows were using it and were having no trouble, I think it was kind of a, a bit of a relief. It sort of vindicated us in the sort of the work we were doing. Because we really had gone into gravity thinking, okay, we'll, we'll adopt Arnold for the show, we'll try it on here, because it suited it so well. We really hadn't been thinking that far ahead to worry about the other shows. And I think it sort of it was a tremendous relief to find that the shows were able to adopt it and all the sort of the work we were doing was paying off on our other VFX shows.